From Galaga to Gal Gadot, nerds are passionate about a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Brennan Lee Mulligan. And my axe. And Ryan Martin. And his axe. And also Jackie Cation. And their axes. Oh, what? what? Three, what? One, one axe all around. One axe, we're just sharing it, we're sharing it. This feels like you all went together on a birthday gift. That, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm like, like, my axe. Like, oh yeah, also, yeah, I'm a yeah, part yeah. of that axe as well. Put my name on the card. Card, yeah. <laughs> You're all a repeat guests, so you kind of know how this works. But we'll go through it real quickly for the viewers at home. This is, um, actually, I've got false statements here. It's up to you to correct me. You just have to correct me with um, actually, before anything you say. If you don't say um, actually, I won't give you the point. And you can correct me at any point. Once you hear the thing that's wrong, just jump right in there. So, let's get started. Hell yeah. In Jules Verne's novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a tour of the underwater world, readers meet Captain Nemo, who lives a secretive life 20,000 leagues below sea level in his advanced submarine. Yes, Brennan. Um, actually, 20,000 <laughs> leagues. <laughs> let's put it down. All right, yeah, lay it on me. Uh, I don't know how many leagues below sea level Captain Nemo lived because leagues are a measurement of distance. Fathoms are a measurement of depth. <gasps> mm, you, uh, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna give it to you. You're, 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 you're. Get in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you can, you can measure depth, uh, depth in leagues. Um, you're close to what we're going for, but uh, that, that's the specifics of it are not, not right not there. Correct? They're not okay. correct. The, it's not, it's not fathoms versus leagues. That's the, uh, that's at issue here. No. Okay. Okay. I know I've already buzzed in. But <laughs> yes, I, you have, yeah. Brennan. But I think I, I'm, I think I'm right. Uh, <laughs> well, it, clearly you think you're right. Yeah, but I think it hard. Okay. Uh, uh, so th this statement, he lives twenty thousand leagues below mm -hmm. sea level. If there's not a comma, th because. Leagues are a measurement of distance. So the the degree to which he lives under sea level wouldn't be a matter of leagues, right? Am no, I... well you could live for in the mile high city, even though miles are, are a measure of distance. You can measure distance in, in any dimension you want. That's that's not in fact at at fault here. Okay. Yes, Jackie. Um, actually. Yes. I think that he doesn't live under the sea. He's an explorer under the sea. Uh, he is an explorer under the sea, but he but he does in fact live there as well. He's sort of an outcast from from society. Yes, yes. Ryan, I am wrong. It's twenty thousand parsecs <laughs> <laughs> in eleven seconds. Uh, no, no, that's not it either. Mm. Uh, um, uh, uh, Brennan, you were close. You're very close to what it, what it is, uh, but I'll go ahead and tell you. The title 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea refers to the distance traveled while they are under the sea. Uh, so, but the issue is not that you can't measure in leagues. Uh, in fact, 20,000 leagues is over six times the diameter of Earth. So they're not 20,000 leagues deep because that is impossible. Uh, they are at most four leagues deep and then traveling 20,000 leagues while under the sea. Ah, oh. A league of their own. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you were on the right track that, that it, it is an issue of, of depth, but not, not the, like, the, the nomenclature. Not the nomenclature. Is gotcha. that fair? Do you think that's fair? Do you think that was a fair? Uh, I do. The brand heads are going to light your ass up, my <laughs> man. Uh, just get ready for it, because they're coming, and uh, I'm just... I think it was we'll super I'm just saying it's a, it's a bigger problem that if you tried to get 20,000 leagues deep, you would punch through the Earth several times over and float out into space. You know, but here's the thing is that could very easily happen in a Jules Verne story. <laughs> it's like, we only, started out below sea and then we became yeah. a space adventure. <laughs> the only way to break the orbit of the, break into orbit is to plunge so deeply into the Earth's <laughs> core that you rocket off the other side. <laughs> please uh, stop, please stop, please stop. That sounds like some goofy Jules Verne science to me. I bet he would do that. Uh, well, no points uh, to anyone for that one, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, moving on to our next question here. Part of Jedi or Sith training includes the hand making of one's own lightsaber. A key component to lithium crystals are found in the crystal caves on the, yes, Brennan. Um, actually, kyber crystals are used in the creation of lightsabers. Lithium crystals don't even exist in that setting. That's Star Trek. That is totally correct, yes. yes. Uh, kyber crystals. 
not dilithium crystals, which are Star Trek, which is used for dilithium uh, crystals are a distance of uh, measurement of distance, <laughs> right? <And> then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that felt like one where everyone was just itching to get to that button. Brennan just got to it first. Uh, it it feels like. Uh, in sci-fi universes, if someone starts to talk to you about like crystal magic and crystal healing, you should maybe listen a little bit more than an art. Like crystals, like maybe these are magic everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah. In real life, they're magic too. Uh, I don't yeah, know I if guess you guys so. have been to Arkansas. <laughs> I bring it up a lot when I teach improv, uh, which is uh, when you're explaining yourself or you're explaining something goofy, people can only, adults can only ask why once, maybe twice, <laughs> before they're like, whatever, right? Yeah. So it's like, if you have, like in Star Trek, it's like, oh, the ships go fast in the speed of light. And they're like, how? how? And you're like, I don't know, there's fucking crystals. And they're like, great, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. You fully he explain that. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Perfect. God, some t- Two lithium? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Right. That can't be. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, one point for Brennan. Brennan is on the board. And this next one is about video games. While the title of Super Mario Brothers is generally only applied to Mario and Luigi, in 1992, the long-lost brother Wario made his first appearance in the Game Boy Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. It's all one title. Brennan, coming in here again, looking concerned, perplexed, gonna have a guess. Um, actually, Wario is not Mario and Luigi's brother. That's correct. Wario is not wow. Mario and, and Luigi's brother. You would think with a name like Wario, with all the same color, you know, general is he kind a of cousin? like. He is supposed to be Mario's childhood friend, who I guess turned mm-hmm. on him at some point. <laughs> I, I was thinking about it, and the question is phrased in such a way of like, of course Wario is a brother. Of course he's a brother. Of look, look at him. But there's no family resemblance. I mean, <laughs> other than, you know what well, I mean? Well, hold on a second. No family resemblance? I mean, on the scale <laughs> of, listen, Mario and Luigi have the same face, just Mario's a little heavier and Luigi's a little <laughs> lankier. Wario's got like baggy eyes and a fucking <laughs> lightning bolt mustache. His nose looks like a weird like budding potato. He's <laughs> he's a he, Wario needs help. <laughs> That's it. It's all nurture with Wario. Yeah. I don't think it was nature. Yeah, I think something that, that happened some, there. Someone wrong sometime in his teens. Yeah. He wasn't held enough as a baby. Yeah, <laughs> it does feel, I, I love the idea too that Wario was, like, Wario used to be Mario's friend and then, like, something happened. It's like, you know, that happens. It, like, feels like Wario, Wario's the kind of person that Mario is, like, not sure whether to invite to his wedding or not. But I think it's a very postmodern take it's like a turn for the series because, you know, early Super Mario Brothers, you know, you're fighting Bowser. Or like in the very mm-hmm. first Mario game ever, he's fighting Donkey Kong, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, the, are the monsters in the world these like turtle dragons or these giant apes throwing barrels? And then Mario comes along and it's like, no, your enemy is a dark reflection of yourself. Yeah. You, what are your demons, it's, you know? It's just you with one of your letters flipped upside down. That's the this biggest feels- evil of all. This feels like a breakthrough, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, I think we've really solved some. We've healed some wounds. I who think knew? so. Yeah, who knew that the existential cry of dread was, <laughs> ah! <Yeah. laughs> ding, 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 The ding, next ding. Mario game is just Mario conquering his inner demons. And just, like a, a real extended therapy session. Like, do, 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 do. I guess it all started when. <laughs> <laughs> I look in the mirror and I cannot say, it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> Uh, This is about Harry Potter. The common rooms of each Hogwarts house is intended to be accessible only to members of that house. Every one is at least partially concealed and requires a secret password or knock to enter. Brennan, again, swooping in. I am sorry. Um, Actually, the Ravenclaw room requires a riddle. That's correct. The Ravenclaw room does not require a secret password. It requires a riddle, which is dumb. Is the (laughs) dumbest thing. (laughs) This is... is this is a ringer here. This is not. Uh... All right. Come in. We'll see. We'll, we, uh, the, we'll, we'll see where we well, trip now, you up. Why do you think that's dumb to have a riddle? I think it's dumb because a riddle, by definition, is less secure than just a word no one else knows. Like uh... any other. Like it, it's hubris. It's saying like we're the smartest house, and only we are smart enough to solve this riddle. Any other dumb dumbs from any other house will come here and just <laughs> just stomp their feet and put a bucket on their head and bang it when they can't <laughs> figure out this riddle. It's like, no, someone, you give them a riddle, like someone could figure that out. And like anything else is just like, do you know the one word I'm thinking of? Like that's objectively a more secure, 
secure way to keep your room safe. All right, Swift on security. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, listen, you gotta do, like the, the Gryffindor common room, it's like a mix of like uppercase and lowercase. They got one digit, they got a couple special characters in there. Like you're not getting into <laughs> Gryffindor. <laughs> it also just sucks because it means that no Ravenclaw students can like go out to Hogsmeade and get fucking <laughs> blasted and come back drunk on butterbeer and be like, fuck, I gotta get to my bed. Oh, the riddle change. <laughs> oh, fuck. What is it? I have three legs. It's the Sphinx one. You're a you're a Sphinx. No, I'm not a Sphinx. It's the riddle of the God damn. Yeah, every fuck. Every big party weekend, there's just a pile of Ravenclaws outside the common room, just like yeah, we all couldn't someone. get in. It's like a designated driver. Yeah. Because I need a designated Riddler. Yeah, someone's yeah. got a... <laughs> <laughs> You need to stay cogent enough that you can solve right. the riddle so we I can need... all get back exactly. in. Exactly. All right, well, that's another point for Brennan. And we move on to our very first shiny question. Shiny questions, just like shiny Pokemon, are at the same number of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. This game is called A Book By Its Cover. We're gonna show you images of book covers with the titles and authors removed. It'll be up to you to name them. Whoever can name the most will get the point. Let's go ahead, flip those overs. Let's take a look at these books. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Cool, Brennan, tell us what these books are. Okay, Wrinkle in Time. Mm -hmm. Oh. Fahrenheit 451. Shit. The Hobbit. This one in the lower left, I'm unsure about. I don't recognize the cover, but I, looking at it, that could be Tash okay. fighting a Narnian in the last battle okay. uh, for Narnia, but I don't, that also could be very wrong. That could be a weird okay. bird man fighting a sword guy. <laughs> uh, Ender's Game, The Miss of Avalon. Okay, you got five out of six. Ryan, what are you, what are you looking at here? Uh, I certainly got A Wrinkle in Time. Uh -huh. uh, second one is Don Quixote. <laughs> uh, then The Hobbit. Uh -huh. uh, and then actually, you couldn't remember that one because it was Don Quixote also. <laughs> uh, second edition of Don I, Quixote, I, yeah. I Miguel Cervantes' famous <laughs> novel, Don Quixote also. <laughs> uh, I knew that one was Ender's Game, but I couldn't remember it in my brain, so it's actually Don Quixote. And the last one, <laughs> is also Don Quixote. <laughs> yeah. You also got five right, all the Don Quixotes. Yeah. No, you have uh, two correct here, two correct. And Jackie, what are we looking at? Okay, I got Wrinkle in Time, Okay. guessed it. That next one I went with Kathy Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Does that feel too soon? Uh, the Hobbit, I got. Uh, the next one I just, I was like, Sandman? There's uh -huh. a dead guy. Uh, I did not get Ender's Game, because I don't think I've ever seen that, the original mm. cover. So I literally uh, guessed incorrectly and said Blade Runner. Okay, I can, then, that's a good guess. I can totally see that, yeah. I, except for that's a spaceship. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Miss of Avalon. Yes. So uh, let's go ahead and let's, let's reveal the correct answers here. I think you've got three correct here, if I'm counting right. right. Yeah, three correct here. Uh, but yes, Wrinkle in Time, Fahrenheit 451, The Hobbit, The Stand, Ender's Game, and Mists of Avalon. Brennan, you got five out of six. That was more than anyone else. One more point this for Brennan, and you are cleaning shut up. This out. is this is not pretty. Not it is pretty. Not, not pretty. Good thing I'm not competitive. And that's it for this preview of Um Actually. If you liked it, there's a whole lot more waiting for you on Dropout. Go to dropout.tv to start your free trial today. I'm Mike Trapp, reminding you to get your pets spayed and neutered, and to get your zombie pets obliterated. Zombie pets, they're not the pets you loved anymore. They're gone, they're gone. Kill them, kill them. Under the couch, you have a stack of maps uh, with the names removed. It's up to you to identify where we are just by looking at the map. All right, 